Now you can live life on an outlet obedience train, dog. I just don't know why you want to. I have a two-story home. I have three dogs, all different ages, all different temperaments, all different personalities. We've never had an accident in the house. We've never had anything shoot at. We've never had anything grab at. You come to our house and you don't know dogs live there. Do they chew? Do they dig? Do they urinate? They just know in the pack environment where it's permissible to do that. There are four reasons it's all will work for you. In our school, we do not allow the four. A dog will work through punishment and pain and fear. And fear. We just don't like the kind of dog you get, so we don't allow it. Could be. <laughs> Sounds like a pet. Okay, the three reasons a dog will work for you, though, know, we encourage wholeheartedly. The first one is love. A dog is the only animal in existence that loves you more than loves itself. <laughs> only animal. Not humans, not bunny rabbits, not Bambi. Dogs. If you bonded with them. Every year these guys go into flaming buildings to wake up their pack if you bonded. And they're more afraid of fire than you are. Or they go into gas-filled rooms. Or they go into bombed-out federal buildings looking for humans. We're advisors to Fort Worth Search and Rescue. The German Shepherd died uh, two months after Oklahoma City through trauma, the same kind of trauma we go through. The uh, Roddy died at the end of last year practicing for Search and Rescue. They were going to gas-filled rooms. They will travel over uncharted territory to be where you are if you bond it with them. The story I tell is about a collie and a mix were in a Montana fire with a family. Didn't know where the dogs were. The family had to get out of there. Humans first, dogs second. 150 miles later, the collie showed up. It was bonded with one of the little girls in the family. Don't know what happened to the mix. Could have got burned up in the fire. Somebody could have fed it or whatever. That's just bonding. That's a pretty good dog. And I'm a pretty good handler. But together we're a great team, and that's what's really important. If you have one-tenth as much joy with your dog as I have with mine, you're in for a ride. I don't know why a dog knows you're going to be sick a week before you do. I don't know why uh, a dog knows when to leave you alone, when not to. I don't know why you would pet a dog and your blood pressure goes down. I don't care. All I know is fact. I, I have 81 Purple Martin babies this year. They travel all the way, the, the parents travel all the way from Brazil just to come to my house. And all them babies went back to Brazil. How they got there? I don't know. I don't care. I just enjoy it. Well, enjoy your dog. I used to think that was a pretty good story about the collie until we read on the internet about Teddy. Teddy traveled 370 miles over seven months to be with his family. What's even more astounding about Teddy, it was in Bosnia during the height of the fighting with very few rivers that had bridges. Now that's bonding. Of course, there are also the dog that can't wait to get out of your backyard, book it, and never come back. Depends upon your relationship with your animal. Humane society is here. I keep quoting you. Let's see if I got it right. In Fort Worth alone, we put down 40,000 dogs every year. Is that close? That's fairly close. Fairly close. 20,000 of which are pretty good animals. Most of them there for five basic reasons. Barking, biting, chewing, digging, and housebreaking. But hell, man, that's what dogs do. And if you get a dog you don't anticipate that to begin with, you already got a problem. They're all there because of an inconvenience to somebody. The sad part of it is, is that how many of those 40,000 every year or the 20 million nationwide would be good dogs if you give it a few minutes a day?
We teach you how to work a few minutes a day with a dog. If you don't have a few minutes a day, you don't need a dog. And a 750,000 Fort Worthy, if you wanted a few that come and really care about your animal, you wouldn't be here. We have had over 2,100 students, 2,100 students come through this school. We're not even making a dent. I wish this orientation was for people who are thinking about getting a puppy, and maybe there wouldn't be so many down at the Humane Society that just break your heart every time I go down there. I can't take my wife there, she cries, because so many beautiful animals are going to waste. I better not get on to the Humane Society kick. I'll be here all night. Second reason a dog will work for you, payment. We believe in paying your dog. You don't go to work unless you get paid. The more you get paid, the better you like your job. Unless you're so rich you never worked a day in your life, they come see me after class, we have some benevolent things for you to do. But most of us work for a living. I don't like your sense of you, but that's good. Most of us work for a living. Dogs are more so. They've got to have a job. And as far as I'm concerned, the philosophy of the ages could be broken down to one sentence. There ain't no free lunch. You end up with a better dog if he's got a reason for living. You know, when I was a kid, we called them bums and derelicts. Today they call them the homeless. I don't care what's politically correct, but I will tell you this. If you don't have a job, and you don't have a reason for living, it doesn't take very long before you get in trouble or have mental problems. Dogs are more so. How you doing? Are you at one of these? Yes, I am. Sorry. Okay. okay. Problem is, you can't pay them the same. There are three ways you pay a dog. One is by using the name of the school. Good dog! That's a payment word. Yeah. Problem is, you must never use it if the dog does nothing. You say, I love you, a sweet name, or whatever, but if you say good dog and it's a payment word, he only gets it if he works. Toys are another payment. Food and treats are another payment. Again, like I say, you can't pay the same. If you're teaching dolphins to jump, and every time a dog... Every time a dolphin jumps, you give it a fish. It doesn't take very long before a dolphin just gives you a semblance of a jump for a fish. They learn very quickly. So, most of the time you pay very little. A lot of times you pay nothing. And every once in a while, a party! And the dog works for the party. He works to be better for you, a better teammate for the party. It works with humans, too. It's called challenges. The greater the challenge, the greater the reward. I learned how to barefoot water ski when I was 50. You could hear me all the way down the river the first time I stood up and stayed up. The challenge was tough. That's why it was so memorable. Same with the dog. You know those uh, milk pounds? $30,000. I gave you $30,000 for an hour's worth of work, you may not want to work the second hour. Heck, you might take the week off. The only thing you end up with is a fat dog. So instead of giving him the whole bone, you just break it up, just give him enough to let him know that he's done a good job. Come on, mister. Sit. Stay. Got around, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay is not an arbitrary statement. Okay is a break word. You must know when your dog's off the job. You take lunch breaks, bathroom breaks, weekends off. You can't leave your dog on work all the time. If you tell your dog to sit and he sits, and he just sits for a second, you reward him. Okay, good dog. You don't say no, sit when he starts to get up. You don't know he's supposed to sit for a long time. It'll get longer, but reward the dog for doing what he want, what you want him to do. Thank you. <coughs>
Are you running the boat? The back side. Run the back side. Sit. It's so easy to train dogs. You take a piece of hot dog, a piece of bologna, a piece of cheese, wave it in front of their nose and say the grunt. They follow it down. It's a very rewarding experience. There's no shoving, no pushing. When they're at home and they're in that configuration, enforce the word. Good down. Good sit. Good stand. If the dog hears it a hundred times, it's a lot better if he only hears it five times. You don't even have to say good. That's for us. We need the cognitive sentence. Dog doesn't need it. Or you do say, no! Remember, it's just a grunt. They don't speak English. Stay. Okay. If for some reason or other you think that having an obedient trained dog is somehow making a dog a servile or a slave to your whims, get a cat. <laughs> Dogs need leadership. They have a very organized hierarchy. If you want something independent, cats will do it for you. If you want a teammate, then you got to be a leader to the dog. Third, and the most important reason of all, a dog will work for you. Fun. If you love what you do, you never work another day as long as you live. I promise you, I put off surgery until next Monday. I ruptured myself lifting a, a thousand pound trail. I would not be out here if I didn't love this. If you love what you do, you never work another day as long as you live. I tell young people out, of, all, out here all the time, if you have Omen, Oh my God, it's Monday, go get another job. You might not make as much money, but you'll be a lot more fun to be around. You'll have less ulcers. You're being, uh, actually, I think you'll make more money because you go to work Monday looking forward to going to the job. It's not a job. At any rate, but now for some bad news here for you. You, for you, 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 you. Women actually make better trainers than me. For a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. One of the reasons, not the only reason, is your voice. A dog's hearing is like this. A male voice is way down here. It sounds like the guttural, angry growl of a pack leader. Every time a man talks to a dog, it's intimidating. A woman's voice is more in mid-range, less threatening to the dog. We tell all our instructors out here, men and women alike, when they're talking to new dogs, to raise their voice like a woman's. But since my surgery, I can't get it up that high anymore. But I will tell you, it's really important that you think dog. I'll give you an example. I'll call the minkster once, normally in my normal voice. And then the way you should train. Watch the difference in the demeanor of the dog. And I heard that boy from far away. I mean, come. Watch the difference. Same result. spoke to me, why would you train any other way? Why would you train any other way? And yet how many people know, call their dog, put him in the house. Call their dog, put him in the crate. Call their dog, squat him on the butt. And they, then they come into our school and say, my dog won't come to me. Really? I wouldn't come to you either. You want your dog always to come to you? Wave a piece of cheese or a hot dog or something in front of their nose. Go hide in the bedroom and yell, come! And when he finds 